Before I begin answering the question that's been posed to me, I'd like to ask the audience and the judges a question. If you were given your sleeping pills, your insulin, or even your coffee, without an iota of information as to how to use it, without an iota of information as to what it does to you and what harm it can cause you, do you think that it would be safe to use? And do you think that you'd be able to use it in a proper, safe, and regulated manner? And this is basically the question, and this is basically the issue behind the question posed to me. Drug consumption rooms are places, are areas which are heavily regulated, where uh, the consumers of drugs can come and safely use the drugs that can, in many cases, be harmful. Right? These are places which gives you access to safe, regulated environments, which are a critical part of just reducing the harms that drugs can cause to people. Now, firstly, I'd, like, I'd just like to tell you that a large proportion of the uh, consumers of drugs are non-problematic users. They are not users who are, in many ways, liable to harm themselves. However, very small proportions of that population, of the entire population who does use drugs, may have dependency problems, may have very serious health risks like HIV, AIDS, associated to those problems, or problems of overdose. And these are the problems that we, as a society and as a community, need to help solve. Because when we continue to focus on the utopia of a drug-free world, we're never actually going to solve the actual problems that drugs create, right? Which are problems like public health epidemics, which are problems like stigmatization, misinformation, and, um, other, and diseases which are caused to the people and to the consumers of drugs. Which is why I believe that drug consumer rooms are an inherent and very, very important part of reducing the harms, uh, particularly within our current climate of criminalization and prohibition of drugs. They're a crit critical part of reducing the harms that drugs do create. So what are these rooms? And like I already explained to you, they're safe, regulated environments where people uh, who are experts regulate and oversee the people who are using dangerous drugs, right? People uh, who, act, who, people who through their free choice come to these centers because they see that these are places which can provide them information. These are places where they will be free of stigmatization and criminalization. And these are places where they can actually go and not cause harm to themselves while using the drug which they may be dependent on or for whatever cause they do need to use these drugs. Now, what are the problems in status quo which these uh, drug consumption rooms tend to solve? Firstly, and this is the major problem with a lot of drug use, is the problem of infectious diseases and uh, the problem of uh, health epidemics caused or, or health problems caused due to these drugs, right? Now, you can classify these in two orders. Firstly, infectious diseases, which are, uh, so one in five injecting users of heroin or injecting users of drugs do have, uh, do have HIV. One in three users in Britain has hepatitis C. And we think that this is a major problem caused because people don't have access to the right kind of pa paraphernalia, which is not available to them, available in the free market. However, when you have these safe rooms, when you have uh, people actively distributing safe needles to you, such as ne through needle exchange programs, we think all of these problems can be solved. Because the reason these people have HIV is due to shared injections, is due to unsafely using those injections, which uh, draw, draw out blood and, uh, and um, substantially increase the risks of infection posed to them. So once you begin allowing, these, allowing access to drug consumption rooms where people know that they can have safe consumption of these drugs, they will begin to use fresh needles, they will begin to learn how to use those drugs and how to cause the least harm to themselves. Secondly, the problem of overdose. We think that often, and this is related to the problem of misinformation. When you have a complete crackdown on a market which is so, uh, so prevalent and which so many people use, there's a lot of misinformation, right? And like the question I posed before you, people don't know how to safely use those drugs, which causes most of the problems that we're talking to you here about. So they don't know what quantity of drugs is going to cause the overdose. They don't know where to safely inject those drugs and so, for example, not to hit an artery and maybe collapse because of that. We think that these, uh, we think that when you have expert regulated and when workers in society and government uh, who are scientific experts in these fields do regulate your use and uh, your consumption patterns, they'll be able to solve all of these problems, such as the problems of overdose, such as the problems of using unsafe drugs, right? Secondly, we think stigmatization is a big problem, and we think that these rooms also help end the stigmatization towards uh, the consumers of drugs. Now, why did this happen? 
Because in normal society, people who consume drugs and especially people who are dependent on drugs are treated as junkies or addicts and like uh, to use uh, common parlance, they'll be called junkies and completely ignored by society. However, once they have access to support groups, once they have access to these rooms where people actively support them and do not di di discriminate against them, do not stigmatize them for using these drugs, we think that that's a much better way to promote their uh, reintegration into society, to reduce their use and dependence, and to make sure that they can be socially productive members of society. Therefore, these rooms add to the social capital of our society, and these rooms allow people to be less stigmatized and treat them as human beings instead of just junkies. Right? So, what are the current problems that we may face with these rooms? I think that there's two major problems, however, these are non-unique to the, the particular rooms. They're problems with the greater society or, or the greater um, structures in drug criminalization that we have. But we think that we, these can be solved. For example, criminalization. Now, a lot of users, for example, may feel that if they enter these rooms, they may be criminalized and the cops may catch them as soon as they leave. However, the way to solve that isn't to remove all of these things. The way to solve that is to introduce changes in laws, not only decriminalization, which may be slightly difficult, but say uh, changes in evidence laws, which don't allow cops to use uh, the evidence that they gain from these rooms in a court of law. And we, th we do see that this is implemented in several areas. Secondly, um, what, what else you do is that you can also encourage these people to join substitution treatments and to join social psychological treatments to end their dependency and to end the use of these drugs which may in several cases be harmful to them right and this is again a part of the inf in entire um, information that these people these places do give to you and this is an, a, a part of um, all uh, this is a part of telling the people how to safely use these drugs and what kind of dealers or what kind of drugs to say safely access right so because of all of these reasons mr speaker uh, and Ladies and gentlemen, we don't think that the utopia of a drug-free world is necessary, nor do we think that it is desirable. However, recognizing the public risks caused by drugs, we need these rooms and we need to reduce the harms caused by drugs. Thank you.